19 minutes after 11, I see that Will Guyatt, our technology guru, has tweeted a survey. I'll retweet it. Are you going to download the NHS COVID app? Yes, no, or waiting to see? And I have to tell you that I, um, it's been such a flipping dog's dinner, hasn't it, getting these things up and running, that I couldn't tell you with any confidence what it was or what it wasn't. But I do know that Brian Cox, the professor... Uh, and sort of rocket scientist, isn't he? Professor of particle physics at, at the University of Manchester, but also, of course, a well-known television presenter and, and, and writer, one of the one of the goodest eggs in the land, I think we could all agree. Uh, he's always helpful in these matters, and he points out, for those who have pr- privacy concerns about the NHS COVID app, it uses Apple and Google's API, not the government. So, it, in, a, in a sense, it's another U-turn, isn't it? If you are a conspiracy theorist and don't trust Apple and Google, remember you've already installed their operating system anyway, so the app will make no difference. So that's, that's quite a helpful little bit of information. And speaking of conspiracy theorists, we move next to a conversation that we have had in the past. I know Sheila's had it at great length, um, and I've been promising to have it again for some time. But it's a tricky one. It's a really, really tricky one. Because, y- y- you know, imagine that there were a significant number of people out there listening to this program who believe that the Earth is flat. That's a bad example, because it doesn't actually do you any harm. Imagine if there was a significant number of people out there who believe that you can fly. Right? Should I let them on the radio? Because somebody listening to this program somewhere might try to fly as a result of what they've heard on the radio. So there is a response. It's why the, you know, it's why this idea that you should respect everybody's views is so palpably absurd. You know, it, it's, it's what, I mean, like the Harry and Meghan stuff today, warning against the dangers of hate lies and um nastiness oh no they shouldn't do that they should know their place they should get back in their lane edward the eighth edward the eighth worshipped hitler there's photographs around of, of hitler kissing the duchess of windsor's hand but apparently people who really really love britain don't know the history of this country and they think that speaking out against fascism or quasi-fascism or, or authoritarian power grabs is somehow something that people shouldn't do. Quite unbelievable, really, when you think about it. But it is dangerous to amplify things that you think are, things that you know are bonkers and dangerous and wrong, even if you're going to get a viral clip out of it because you end up pulling some poor sod's pants down live on the radio. That's not good. That's not responsible behaviour. It's not dutiful. The idea that I should respect your opinion while you're telling me that the earth is flat and the queen's a lizard is is just bonkers, right? So how do you get into this growing problem, this growing story, this growing phenomenon, best evinced perhaps by scenes in Trafalgar Square at the weekend when uh, thousands of people gathered to sort of worship at the altar of absurdity? How do you do it without running the risk of recruiting because I'd love to be able to fly. Someone, someone on James's show says I can fly. Oh, I'm just popping upstairs, darling. I'll, I'll, I'll be down in a minute. I'm literally. So the way I think is best, the way I would like to do it, is this. I want to know what it's like when it arrives in your world uninvited. Okay? I don't want you to ring me and tell me why you know that David Icke is right or why you are certain that the Queen is in fact a lizard, or you are 100% clear that if you get a vaccine, Bill Gates will be tracking you using a secret microchip for the rest of your days. I feel nothing but pity and sorrow for you, okay? Good luck. I hope you find your way out of this madness sooner rather than later, but you'll understand why I can't let you on this programme, because you might infect somebody else. It would appear that conspiracy theories are almost as contagious as coronaviruses. So how do we do it? Because something weird happened to me at the weekend, and it was really exacerbated yesterday when we took a call. Did we did we get that call ready to play out again? The call from the lady yesterday. Um, no, okay. Uh, We took a call from a lovely lady yesterday with a lung condition who is, I, I mean, being bombarded by friends accusing her of being a sheeple for simply believing that she needs to shield in order to protect her own health. And that, compared to my own encounters on on social media, is, well, it's a million times bigger. It's a million times worse. I 
want you to tell me a what it's like when it arrives in your world. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. We should probably put a little bit more effort into detailing precisely what it is that they believe. You know, because you probably, if you're uninfected by this phenomenon, when you hear me describing a belief that Bill Gates wants to inject you with a secret microchip so he can track you all around the planet, you probably think I'm exaggerating. I'm not sure I've gone far enough. And the question I really... I mean, it's a little bit voyeuristic of me, perhaps, but I, we're trying to disinfect the darkness. We're trying to turn on the lights. I... um I want to know what's happened to your relationships. Imagine being in love with someone who believes this utter bilge. Imagine if your mum starts believing this utter bilge. Do you remember that Fox News story that was so heartbreaking and such a canary down the coal mine where people were reporting in America that they, their, their, their parents or their grandparents had started behaving so oddly because they were getting all their news off Fox News? And that's news in the very loosest possible sense of the word. And they thought Barack Obama was going to personally come around to their house and steal their guns or their jewellery. So they'd started burying stuff in the garden. There was this magnificent piece of reportage going back four or five years of, of families that had been broken by um, the, 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 the nonsense that is spouted by Fox News. Here, the equivalent would be Brexit. We took heartbreaking calls for a while, a long while, from people whose families had been really driven apart. I'm hoping that you're moving back together now the truth is emerging, but it's a much, much easier thing to describe than to undertake, isn't it? Admitting that you're wrong. Admitting that you've been mugged, conned. So, this is the latest example, I think, of people believing rubbish, dangerous rubbish, to such a degree that they're prepared to compromise genuine loving relationships in their own lives. If I am describing you, please call me now. So we have to talk about it because it's growing. It popped up, I'm not suggesting this is proof of a particularly powerful pudding, but it popped up on my own Facebook page at the weekend. Now, I've told you a few times, I look after my Facebook page quite carefully. It, it, it's very personal stuff. It's not worky stuff. I don't think I'm friends with anyone on Facebook that I don't know quite well in real life. Twitter, completely different, obviously. Twitter is like the uh, uh, sort of public me, if you like, and Facebook is very much the private me. So all of the people who I, I see on Facebook are friends of mine. Uh, well, going back in some cases, 30 or 40 years. And, and there's a lad there, I haven't seen him for a while, we, but, but only like four or five years. We used to knock about quite a lot until then. He was in my FIFA uh, crew, you know. We'd play PlayStation together. And he's gone. He's gone over the edge. He, I think he was in Trafalgar Square at the weekend. He's posting stuff that is, I mean, you know, beyond bilge. It, it's incredible. Stuff about Gates, stuff about Soros. Uh, and it is absolutely breathtaking for me because I know him. And I love him. Oh, I, it's a bit strong, I guess. We're all blokes, but I do, you know. And I, I respect him. That's probably the word. He's a compassionate and intelligent human being. I have this slight tendency, perhaps, to presume that everybody who, who, who falls for this bilge is a little bit challenged or a little bit nasty. And there has been a weird crossover from racism and, and, and far-right rhetoric into mask scepticism or whatever they're calling it this week. It doesn't mean that, I mean, it doesn't mean that everybody who's uh, suspicious of the strength or the scale of our response to the coronavirus is a massive racist, but pretty much every massive racist I've come across has got a negative view on masks. I've worked out why briefly. It's very simply that they're, they're children who've never grown up, so telling them that they have to change their behaviour makes them spit their dummies out. So, listen, let, let's, let's, not, let's not behave in a way that was acceptable 100 years ago anymore because it's not acceptable. How dare you? Ah, oh, rule Britannia, land of hope and glory. And similarly, would you mind wearing a mask on the tube? Oh, how dare you? It's just a, a dummy spitting exercise. That, that explains the conflict. That explains the intersection of, of you know, thick... Well, not thick, actually. That's not fair. Just racists and what you might call people who use words like muzzle or, 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 or face nappy. They ju they're just children who've never grown up. And whenever anybody tells them to pull their socks up or, or get their hands out of their pockets. They, they have a fit of the vapours. So that was what was weird for me because my friend is not one of those people. He is truly one of the most uh, compassionate and, and generally enlightened people. He was a little bit new age for my tastes, you know, a little into his crystals and his, his incense and all that malarkey. 
But he's fallen for this crud, hook, line, and sinker. And I wouldn't have a clue. I would not have a clue how to start helping him back into the light. Because I think anything I say will sound like an attack. So, what happened in your world? 03456060973. And where is the... Where has it left your relationship with the victim of, of the latest con stroke conspiracy theory regarding coronavirus. It's just coming up to half past 11 and Dominic Ellis is here with your headlines. 11.33 is the time and you are listening to James O'Brien on LBC where I want to know how you cope with cults, stroke conspiracies, stroke, random other word that begins with C, when they arrive in your life unprompted. So it's not some weirdo on the wireless or some eccentric on the telly, it's your mum or your boyfriend, or your daughter. And the particular cult stroke, conspiracy stroke, Cracker Jack that we're discussing today is this curious idea that the coronavirus is a hoax, or that Bill Gates is behind a, a nefarious plan to inject us all with... See, I don't know what to do with my voice. I, I, I've got the... Uh, uh, you know, even my voice starts taking the mickey when I, I... This is all true. This is what people believe. It's true that they believe it. And it was Bernadette in Aylesbury that... that sort of brought it back into my consciousness yesterday. I'm delighted to say she's rung in again. So yesterday we were talking about your fears regarding shielding and I, I suggested that when we find the time to talk about this issue, we'll talk to you again. You, you, you Bernadette, are, I, I mean, coming across quite a lot of people who think you're worrying unnecessarily about your health because the coronavirus is either an exaggeration or indeed a hoax. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, um, boy. Um, and, uh... When, when did mean, it start, uh, Bernadette? When did it, when did it start um, happening? Probably more or less from the beginning, really. Um, and I would sort of add that often these... Well, they, they, yeah, they are friends that yes. I've known most of my life, you know? Yes. A very long time. But then I found that they also believe other conspiracies... Um, and at first I would try to ask for proof where it came from, but I, they, but they were just so, oh, you know, I would get, oh God, I can't believe you are, you are so gullible that I am, I'm gullible, that I've been brainwashed, they know the truth, I don't, and it's going to affect our future grandchildren, but then it launches into... Yeah. Uh, other conspiracies, and that Trump is only in office to get uh, uh, in, to get rid of paedophiles. This is the Q. There's, I'm just going to pause you there because not everybody will know what you're talking about. This is the QAnon conspiracy yes, theory, exactly, which has exactly. Donald Trump secretly working to un yes. to, to dismantle an international paedophile network that smuggles yes. smuggles trafficked children in flat yeah. packed furniture. And there was yeah. a bloke <laughs> quoted in the Times from the Trafalgar Square. Uh, protests at the weekend, claiming that, that London is riddled with tunnels in which oh, God, abducted yeah. children are being secretly Pizza held. Gate. It's called Pizzagate. Pizzagate is the New York version of this. But and, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you're Bernadette in Aylesbury, right? You, yeah. you, you probably didn't realise that you were in social circles where these ideas are, are popular. You, no. you sort of expect it to be, I don't know who we expect it to be, tinfoil hat type people, don't we? Whereas yeah, you're, you're yeah. describing people that you'd go on a picnic with or, or, or you might see yeah. in church of a Sunday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and then it's their family, their sisters, their sons, their, you know, and then the Trafalgar Square rally last, whenever it was, a few weeks ago, they all go. And then the pride is that they don't wear masks. Yes. And then it's, um, well, look, I went and I haven't got it. Quite um, incredible. What, what do they yeah. think of the deaths? Do they think people are lying? or, or had, I mean, yeah. they, they just uh, genuinely think, so it is a bit Sandy Hook. It is a bit like the news is not true. It is simply not true. I'm getting the truth off Facebook. The news is, is lies. Yeah, um, and it's lies because um, everything is put down to COVID. Uh, if you have a flu or... Uh, you know, if you're admitted to the hospital or you've tested positive, mm. um, 
it's it, it, it's oh, I don't know. It, it's sort of um, so they're calling everything a COVID death, it. even if you get hit by a car. They're putting you down as a coronavirus death, the death tolls. But but I'm thinking about what happens when they. Oh, here's a great example from Kate Robbins, who says I've lost a close mate over it. I was reading about Kate Garraway's husband being still unconscious from COVID when I received a text from a former friend simply saying it doesn't exist. It's a scam. I replied exactly. with and words I, I don't often use in yeah. texts. What well, I mean, people yeah, are dying. It's all lies. Yeah, uh, I've, a friend of ours has died. Um, but then I'm it's, sorry. oh, she was massive and overweight. Yeah, right. or she was asthmatic. Or it was... And what's they, the plan, Bernadette? Because I think I know, but I'd love to hear what you've gleaned from this. So why are they lying about coronavirus? It's about mass control. It's, yeah. it's mass control. Um, it's to like, eliminate the weak, the old, the... You know, so it's sort of eugenic. You, so, yes. No. I, well, yeah, you take care, Bernadette. Thanks for ringing in again. You've actually ticked a lot of boxes there, and and anybody listening who's new to this is going to be reeling. But that's why I wanted you to hear Bernadette's voice because, you know, this isn't some sort of underground movement. This is smack in the middle of normality, smack in the middle of normal society. It's not like you know moon landings or people who thought that nine eleven was a. Uh, was a set-up job. This, this is, and, and she's right to point out that it leeches into other conspiracy theories, but this is right in the middle. Right in the middle. And remember what happens with, with vaccine scepticism, pro-death lobbying. Uh, <laughs> it affects everybody, potentially. Maxine is in Leeds. Maxine, what can you tell us? Hi, James. I Hello. listen to you all the time. You're very um, welcome. Thank you. Sorry. So, um, I'm an NHS key worker. I'm, I'm a trainee nurse associate. I work... Um, well, quite front line in one of the hospitals. And um, I I was listening to your conversation with Bernadette yesterday, mm. and I've met quite a lot of these people who have said to my face, knowing very well what I do, um, yeah. that coronavirus doesn't exist. Um, and some of the conspiracy theories have been very interesting. Um, my favourite one is from someone who I work with, who was shielding from her husband, got so caught into the whole QAnon thing of that this whole coronavirus is a conspiracy because the Hollywood are all paedophiles, so they're all on house arrest. So the reason why they want to keep it undercover is because they want to do the COVID, and that's the ruse. That's genuinely what she believes. So here's the this problem, Maxine, and I sense from your, your tone that you feel the same as I do about the scale of this problem, is that that is so... God, you know, I, I, very, I don't think I've ever sworn accidentally on the radio, but I come close occasionally, <laughs> and the, I'm searching for an adjective here to describe this. And the one I want begins with B and involves what comes out of bat's bottoms, but I can't say that, I can't say that live on the radio. No. So it's so out there. I mean, what Bernadette described her friends falling for is so completely out there. How do you begin to build a bridge towards these people? It's really difficult. So I've... What I try and do, I mean, I've had it with taxi drivers, I've yeah. had it with acquaintances, I've had it with a, a friend, um, my friend's mum, who was my friend's also a nurse. Um, I try and speak to them about the science behind it, yeah. um, about the science behind wearing masks, why, how it's about to, to wear the mask is to protect others, not to protect yourself. And it's just this cognitive dissonance, their eyes glaze over, and they just don't want to listen to it. And what's the plan? What's the ultimate plan with the ones you're dealing with? What, I mean, why are mysterious power brokers and, and, and figures doing these things that they believe that they're doing? What's the end game in their sort of warped <laughs> imaginings? There's, there's, never, there's never a real answer to it. There's never a real answer to it. And I love no. that they, ha they, they have the optimism that they think the Conservatives are competent enough to pull off a ruse this big, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a bit out there, isn't it? Well, I do um, know, it's not that long ago I was saying, I almost hope there is a sinister master plan, because at least then... Uh, it, it would take away the, the the fear that they absolutely haven't got a clue what they're doing from one day to the next. But I don't I don't think anybody really believes in the master plan anymore. And and have you had any success at all in popping these balloons of bilge? Um, just as, as I say with the friend that I've worked with, just because we 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 met coronavirus patients, so obviously. I've, she brought her thinking back around, but to people who are detached mm. from it, mm. they come from a place of privilege. They will never be in a hospital and not see how ill coronavirus oh. makes you. And I've That's seen the how bit I don't makes. get. That's the bit I don't get. Is, you know, I took <laughs> calls from day one from people who were burying their relatives, sometimes over Zoom, because of the... And they think that they're like... I mean, are they fibbing as well, or are they... I, I don't... I don't. It's so bizarre, isn't it? 
And I you're a really... nurse. It must be heartbreaking for you on every level because you're dealing with this stuff uh, 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 when you're on shift. And then you come home, you pop onto Facebook, and there's people telling you that you're, ma- you're imagining the patients you've I been know. treating all day. I know, I know. What, what kind of dream world do I live in? To be honest, Jim, it does make me angry, but it upsets me and it scares me for the future. The fact yeah. that um, not, you've got scientists, you've got epidemiologists, you've got nurses and doctors, and our, their word is not being taken seriously at all. I know. Um, it really scares me for the future of healthcare and public health in this country. If so many people are choosing not to listen to people who... Quite frankly, we know what we're talking about, and a lot of it, unfortunately, is very complex. Mm. We don't really know the science behind coronavirus, and I don't know if people feel condescended to. I don't think they feel isolated because they don't really understand a lot of the language that we're talking about. So it's like a, so, com- a comforting simplicity to the to, yeah. the to the conspiracies and the lies. Well, that's what I think. Or Maybe. either it, it's because this sort of situation is so out of control. They want to feel that there is something, an outside force controlling it. So but, it's fate uh, and it's fickle and no one's yeah. got a clue. And yeah. politicians, particularly in this country in America, have really let us down by, by not telling us the truth or not admitting mistakes. And into that vacuum moves this madness. Because exactly. I, I, I want to believe something substantive. I haven't been given anything substantive to believe by the so-called experts because, yeah. you know, the work hasn't been done yet. It's still so. So I'm going to believe that clown over there who's told me that Bill Gates wants to inject... Have you heard the microchip stuff? Have you come across them? Oh, I've, I've heard the microchip stuff. I even had a taxi driver say he didn't believe it because when your wife has a baby, yeah. they give you the due date and the due date's always wrong. So doctors don't know what they're talking about and I was a bit like, well, there's a few problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mistress of understatement, Maxine. And, yeah. There's a few problems with that. There's a few problems with that. I, 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 I just think... As well, I think part of the problem is the government. There's been so many mixed messages when you've got Dominic Cummings going to Barnard Castle and people think, oh, is there really a problem if he's doing that? Well, really, mm. it must all be fake and the mixed messages and... Yeah, you know, I, I mean, that, that's what I mean by the vacuum being a, being a, a, a space into which anything can move, but the... Uh I mean, the speed of movement is staggering, and the and the scale of movement, that's the thing. I mean, the, 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 the grown-up news, if you like, is that one in five don't want a COVID-19 jab um, because well, they're worried about side effects or they've fallen for uh, misinformation regarding the, the reason why it is hopefully going to be available soon and of course that the, that's uh, maxine will know better than i do it's, i'm such a child you know I, I just noted there in my lizard brain maxine rhymes with vaccine which is no help to anybody whatsoever is it but anyway that's the way my brain works and th- th- of course the, the more people take a, a a vaccine the more effective it becomes the more achievable herd immunity becomes but but here we are let's maybe move into the realms of personal relationships as well the friendship possibly even the love affair the family connection that is under serious strain because because of what they've fallen for it's eleven forty-five. I, I, I knew it would but it's still quite dispiriting to see phones have rung absolutely off the hook with people whose um family members friends loved ones have fallen down the uh, conspiracy theorist rabbit hole with reference to coronavirus here's one of the more poignant texts that's come in from joy james i'm working from home so i can't ring in um my partner believes in the conspiracy theories and is always sending me quotes news clips from alt-right media organizations about bill gates and anti-vaxxers he also believes armageddon is coming and calls me a little robot because i call out everything he sends me he's also started saying that he admires trump he's an intelligent man a scientist but i think his mind has been addled by having had covid19 himself and the effects of lockdown I love him so much, but I'm almost ready to break up with him. I know the man I love is still in there, and I'm hoping, perhaps in vain, that he'll snap out of this, but I'm tearing my hair out, and I don't feel I can talk to anyone about it. It's torture. Oh, Joy, I'm so sorry to hear that. I really am, and it's, I guess, the the perfect distillation of why we have to have these conversations. But I want to have them with people like Joy, not with people like her partner. Some of you very, very supportive of that stance. Some of you are a little sceptical of it but as with everything else in in life it's not cast in stone you know maybe i will change my mind but but not today Eleven fifty-one. uh let's go to cardiff re is there re what's your story hi james first of all i just want to say thanks so much for raising awareness to this because i think it's been on the fringes for a while but now it's you know it's definitely becoming mainstream it's parking on our Um, lawn isn't it 
It is. Um, just what you spoke to then about the lady whose partner is in science. Mm. So is my best friend. Um, has a degree in microbiology, <laughs> as does my husband. That's how they know each other. Right. And has just completely gone down the rabbit hole. Um, we both had an interest. And I mean like an outside interest in right. conspiracy. Sure. Um, but then he suddenly became quite recluse. He got rid of his telly, which right. was a real weird sign. <laughs> he, um, he's just constantly on YouTube. And, and what and people who don't spend a, a lot of time on YouTube don't know, I had to have this explained to me a while ago, is... I mean, you know, on Netflix, it's quite fun because it does a sort of, if you liked this, you might like this type thing, doesn't yeah. it? It's called an algorithm, and it looks at what you've done and makes suggestions for what you might do next. And yeah. YouTube makes its money the longer you're on there. The longer you're on there, the yeah. more adverts you watch. And yeah, you must be making some money for YouTube. Then. Well, that's the point, because if you were to, for example, watch a clip about how awful James O'Brien is, suddenly you get <laughs> recommended 500 more clips about how awful James O'Brien is, and all you ever see is clips about how awful James O'Brien is. And I know you won't believe this, Ree, but some people end up believing that James O'Brien is awful. Surely not. No, Surely they not. do, I promise you, I've, I've got the receipts. <laughs> but that's the point, isn't it? He gets an mm. utterly undiluted diet of... Cracker Jack. Well, that was that was my next point I was mm. coming to. Diet. Believe it or not, it's even affected that. Go on. So, he's now only eating meat. Oh, That's Lord. it. And um, when I said, is this an Atkins thing? You mm. know, trying to kind of lighten it. He said, no, it's because of this. Oh, I even hate using these words, but the vegan woke culture that we need to stamp out. It's all lies. And oh, of course, he, he oh. doesn't believe in the climate change. And he's a man of science. And when I say best friend, I mean, he's, he's pretty much an uncle to us then. And when we do go out and see him, you know, it, there is there's still the guy that we know there. Oh, that was what was so but, powerful about Joy's contribution. The man I love yeah. is still in there somewhere. So what do you And then suddenly do, he just yeah. goes off on a tirade. He about does. He won't. Gate. He won't leave it. Um, he won't. So you know yeah. what they say: don't talk about politics or religion at dinner or something like that. He won't observe that. He, 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 no. he Oh God. And he says things like. Well, oh, this is the biggest one I've heard, is that, you know, when all the lockdowns were happening in Leicester? Yes. I said, well, that's because, you know, of sweatshops and things like that. And he yes. said, no, it's not. It's because they were children farming. And, <laughs> and that's QAnon, right? Or, or a version yeah, I, I of... Yeah, it must be. A yeah, version of or QAnon. Like a British version of. I don't know if it's a British version of, but children farming? Children farming. <laughs> well, and like organ farming, right. children or children's organs, and and what's in it for? What's in it for the, the for Bill Gates, or what's in it for the? Well, that's what I've said to him. I've said if it's such an anti-capitalist thing, yes, it hurts them the most. Well, that's, though, yeah, but you're bringing logic <laughs> to the table. You're bringing logic to the table. Is it? I mean, no. is it? Okay, I, uh, Ree, I'm just going to have a quick word with Theo Washerwood because we think that the. Chancellor's statement might be sooner rather than later. Yes.